to be a great people, Kalel. They wish to be. They only lack the light to show the way. Everybody, welcome to the channel and um, welcome to the video. We're at Goodwill, one of our usual Goodwill spots. My camera too high? I'm not sure. But um, we're going to get in there, really look for for eBay, buy low, sell high, continue the journey, trying to, you know, find inventory for our store, keep our store going, finding profitable items, making money. That's what we do around here. Uh, like the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, bell notification, and don't forget to comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the finds. Okay. Oh, that's kind of cool. This might be like a, yeah, nothing really that great. There are some Star Wars tiki mugs to be on the lookout for. They do come out of um, Disneyland and also um, uh, higher end tiki makers do make them as well too. So definitely keep your eye out for those. Um, Scope out the glass here. We did get a nice jewelry bundle the other day. Oh, look at this. Well, first of all, a little ukulele here. It's interesting. Ukulele treasure box. Hmm. Let's take a look at that. We'll put that in the cart. We'll take a look at that later. Um... Let me make sure the camera is adjusted accordingly. We got, can you even see this? I can't even, okay, Jim Shore. Jim Shore cats. Interesting. Curious on the pricing on that. I mean, not. Okay. The smaller ones appear to be about $6. I'm gonna try to look some of these up and just see really quick. Got the, uh, let's see, a lot of Halloween. All right, let me take a look for a sec. Okay, so we're going to pick up several of the cats. Um, the smaller ones, the larger ones are priced up, uh, just round up to 17 And the smaller ones were 7 each. And the medium-sized ones were around 12 so 11 Yeah, I'm rounding up here, so... Um, not too, too bad. From what the comps were looking, what I can potentially get around, around, listed value around 30 each. So, we should do pretty good. And then with Halloween coming up, I might keep uh, the Halloween ones. But the thing is, what I did not see in the, in the case, this is an... That's a wood sculpture there. That's wood? Yeah, that is wood, all right. I'm gonna scan, I don't see any markings on it, but we'll scan it with Google image. Um, but what I didn't see were the Jim Shore, you've probably seen it in my videos, uh, Jim Shore egg baskets. And my guess is they've come out of the glass. They were probably repriced and placed somewhere. This is a marble. It's got like a, uh, let's, can't really make that out. It's not very well done. Probably would have had a stopper though. Um, Jim Shore egg, did I say that? Egg baskets? They're probably repriced. They're probably out and about on the floor somewhere. Does that keep my eye out for them? I don't know exactly when they would have done that. So odds are, odds are they are um, gone already. Oh, here we go. How did I miss that? There's a Denny mug. Collection piece right there. All right. And what are we paying for that? $2.89, so really cool. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, that's usually a sign. If I see a Denny mug, that's usually a sign that there's gonna be some more, hopefully good stuff around here. Well, I mean, we got those cats. So those Jim Shore cats should do pretty well. Not only are they just Jim Shore, which is um, fairly popular, I find it a lot at Hallmark, um, but it's cats, and people love cats. I like cats too, unfortunately. I am very allergic to cats, so I'm, I can't have any. Um, well, I mean, I could. I'd be dying all day. 
my eyes. It's my eyes. You know, my watery eyes. I talk about that a lot in these videos, you know, but with the changing of the weather. I just get such watery eyes. Everything else, too, but the eyes are the worst. Okay. You know what? Here's another one of these. Another one of these marble pieces. I might just scan this just to see. Let me take a look. Okay. I have to restart my phone. For some reason, it's not working right right now, so. But check this out as I was walking. What's the price going to be? $22. Oh. This is, it's probably not going to be worth t picking up a 22. I mean, it's cool, but the smaller ones, it's not the best. You can see it's got a cloudy bottom, so it's not highly polished. So we're going to stay away from it. It is cool. If it was 15 or less, I probably would have done it. But plus I already got those gym short cats, so I'm not going to gamble on that one. It's heavy too, so... All right, we're in the toys. Let me fix the camera here. All right. Oh, that's heavy. Super, oh, this is, um, the, no, I'm not gonna show that one. That might have, everything just fell out of it. Okay, we picked that up now, and okay. check out these bags of figures. Sometimes if you see like dinosaur bags, you might have the um. I found the Dino Riders dinosaurs in these, which is pretty cool. It's something I collect. There's the Intel guy. For two dollars, it's not bad actually. Let's throw that in there. Um, Making our way to electronics here. We're gonna take a look at it. Oops, nope, oh, something's flying out of that. Okay. All right. Let me finish up with these bag. I'm gonna finish up with these bags here, and then um, let me move over to electronics. Okay. We quickly looked at electronics. I didn't really see too. There really anything there. I didn't grab anything except from across the way. Oh, I found this game. I don't think I showed you this, but it should go for like thirty to forty. I'm going to open it up, check it out, see if it looks good or not. Um, but, oh, 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 Pottery Barn. Uh, we have a oh, paper lantern. Yeah, it's not Pottery Barn. You know, I'm actually Pottery Barn, just one of those names that triggers something could be good. Uh, Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel, Magellan. Like a Rolodex thing. I mean, if it's not used, it actually might be good for two dollars. See here. I'll do that. See. Oh yeah, look at that. I don't think there's any. There's some extra cards back here. And yeah, I think we'll get that for two dollars. It's in clean condition. Okay. What is this? Corner protectors. I might pick this up just because it could be useful for shipping. It's only a dollar seventy nine, so um I'm always on the lookout for cheap, cheap shipping supplies. They do pop up from time to time. Always double check the pricing, um because sometimes they'll be priced up or sometimes they'll have um priority boxes for sale. I do see a lot at the um, flea market trying to sell priority boxes. Those you can get for free. So, all right, I'm going to keep searching this little miscellaneous aisle and I'll see what we can find. 
And now we're at the clear glass, so... It doesn't feel very good. Um, yeah, it's always hit or miss. <laughs> Lots of misses. Not that necessarily I'm buying anything, just in what I'm picking up, I should say. There's Jim Beam. Mm, not picking up Jim Beam. A little too common, you know, they do a lot of, um, they do a lot of, uh, glassware branded stuff, a lot of branded stuff. Jim Beam, um, what's the other one? Uh, Jack Daniels, so, we tend to stay away from those just because there's a lot of them out there. We for anything cool, unique, interesting distilleries that just don't put too much out there. Um, I've talked about, um, the, um, what are those cups called? They're called, um, the name escapes me now. Little tulip-shaped glasses for whiskey tasting. Uh, these are interesting, but I don't think they're really anything. Kind of like the bar, like beer mug glass. Glencairn, that's what it's called, a Glencairn. Branded Glencairns are pretty rare, so... Well, cars in general, you just don't see them out and about, so. Um, so if I do see them, I'm going to pick up one, or there's got to be in a set of four at least. And if they're branded with something, usually pretty good. All right, let's move on to purses and bags. Okay, so the little ukulele Hawaiian thing is actually a trinket box. So we're going to pick that up, because that should be around... If I had to, I think I'm kind of guessing on that one. It's going to be around thirty dollars, so I'm hoping that's how I'm going to list it at at least, and hopefully get close to that if we can. Put the camera around here. The one thing you should definitely be on the lookout for. And I've talked about this before, but old Target items, people do look out for them. A little Tiki Hut. Nope, oh, it's falling in my face. That's why Tiki Hut. Definitely something to look out for. Um, there's the Target on the bottom there. Let me do this so I can get a thumbnail as well too. So you're gonna get a thumbnail out of this. Let me do this because try to get the stuff out of the background. <laughs> the things we gotta do for YouTube here or the YouTube algorithm. So look out for these old target items. Um, some of the uh, birds can do pretty well. Uh, there is a tiki, um, I know there's a tiki um, like water dispenser that came out of Target that sells for around 50. There are no sold comps on that soap dispenser, so I'll probably price it a bit high. Probably look about 50 bucks and see what happens. Tiki people are pretty, you know, there's a lot of tiki people out there. I'll tell you that right now. All right, I'm going to keep, um, I'm going to put away a few things like that mother-daughter wood thing that, oop, oop, lost my face, but there it is right there. I'm going to put that away because that's not really worth it. And everything else is good. We're going to take everything else in the cart. I got the Jim Shore up at the front, and I'll probably do a little um, short video on that, on the Jim Shore stuff I picked up. But that's it for the video. That's it for the trip here at Goodwill. We'll see you in the, at the end. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the end of the video, and I hope you guys enjoyed that trip over to Goodwill. Just make sure my camera is set up here. Everything's pretty. <laughs> my my um, picture table and everything is a little, little busy. You know, it's a little bit of a crazy day today. Um, I'm actually filming this part the morning that I have to get it, this video out. Um, just busy, busy, busy. I've already been to the flea market. I've already been to the Goodwill this morning. Uh, I've got some great items to resell. And, so we're gonna do a little something different. Uh, I'm definitely gonna talk about sell through rate a little bit here. And I actually have the items in hand. So I won't, uh, I'll show you what they sold for and then um, I'll show you the items, physically show you the items because I have yet to package all these up. These are items that just sold that have to go out today, which is Friday. So, um, and they're cool and they're unique items and definitely be on the lookout for these items. Some of them don't necessarily follow the sell-through rate or the numbers, and we will discuss that as we go along here. So busy, busy, very busy week. And um, yeah, let's just get into it. Let's get into the what's sold so I can do so, a little bit of talking points here for this. Let me know what you guys think of the Goodwill trip too. Look out for that um, Target home stuff, especially the stuff that's already been retired. It's already a year, two, three years old. 
it's cheap. It's cheaply made stuff, but people want it people desire it. especially tiki stuff look out for tiki things the people love tiki you see us pick up tiki mugs all the time you can't pay too too much for tiki mugs um some of the rarer ones some of the more you know desirable stuff from disneyland obviously going to sell for better profit than the ones um than just generic ones that when you take a vacation over to hawaii you get them at, at a luau or something like that um those ones will be like around 10 to 15 dollars so make sure you pay accordingly um with that in mind i should say okay busy <laughs> good thing i already had coffee already ate so you know we're walking oh plus it's it's deadpool wolverine night i should have probably gone yesterday when it actually came out but um my wife wanted to go tonight so we're definitely gonna go watch deadpool wolverine tonight deadpool obviously one of my favorite characters um cable from the marvel universe is my favorite character of all time when it comes to comic book characters uh, I've been a huge fan of Cable since he was introduced. Um, let me know down in the comments. If you guys watch Marvel movies, like Marvel movies, superheroes, let me know what your guys' favorite superhero is. Um, then it would be uh, Wolverine, of course. Everybody loves Wolverine. And uh, Deadpool was right there. You know, like a close second between, you know, Wolverine and Deadpool. Uh, but Cable. This Cable came out in Deadpool 2, so that was... I watched that movie over and over. I, I, I think I watched that movie two nights ago as well, too. So, um, okay. Let's get into the what's sold here. Uh, right off the bat, first item here I want to show you guys. And we're going to talk about selfie rate on this one. These are flower fairies. I did a video, and you saw in the video that where I picked these up, they were right around $12 a figure, and they sold for 20 I got to make sure I move over so you guys can see the... So I can pop it up over here. Um... So this one sold for a little over $26. You saw that I picked them up for right around $12 each uh, figure. And I really wanted to pick these up. I saw these in the in the window or in the glass at Goodwill. And they had them priced at something crazy. It was like $27 or $28, which is about what I figured they would sell at. I figured they would sell for right around $25. Maybe plus or minus a few bucks here and there. And um, now... If you look at the data, if you look at sell-through rate, the numbers will tell you not to buy these. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, yes, do buy these and get these listed. They will sell for around $25. I paid a little bit much, and I wouldn't necessarily advise anybody to pick these up for $12 a piece. Um, yeah, just because the profit margin, we're gonna make about you know eleven or twelve dollars each on the on each of these items. Somewhere probably like eleven bucks um, on each of these items. Um, so it's not they're gonna hit our mark, but I knew these would be great for eBay, and I got a whole bunch of them. So uh, I think I only have two, one or two more left of these fairies. Now again, if you look at the sell through rate, you look at the numbers. It's gonna it, the numbers will advise you to not buy this item. But I'm here to tell you, yes, buy it. They will sell, and they will sell for right around twenty-five-ish dollars. Um, how do I know this? Experience. I've been doing this for so long. Um, I've sponsored all kinds of items. Obviously, I have a specialty, and I definitely um, you know, tend to lean towards that, which are toys and um, computers. So, not Macs, by the way, not Macs, <laughs> computers. Even though I do sell, like, you know, I, I do sell a lot of keyboards. These are Mac, com Apple compute, uh, uh, keyboards. I do buy and sell a lot of them, um, but um, I primarily specialize in non-Apple computer stuff. Um, but, but, you know, if you're doing this for so long, you're gonna come across all kinds of items. You're gonna gain all kinds of knowledge. And I'm using that knowledge to, uh, to buy items that I know will sell against the grain or against what the numbers say. Think of the numbers like a digital signal. Digital signals are um, are basically just uh, like a flat square. You see, like a square. They go uh, uh, uh. so it's just like a square, like a cut off square, and down, then up, then down. When you look at an analog signal, it's like like lots of triangle, like lots of up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So when, when you convert something to digital, you're cutting off all those peaks. So you're cutting off the peaks on the top, you're cutting off the peaks on the bottom. So you're making these perfect little square tops. And um, so you're losing data. When every time you convert something to digital, you're losing data. When I take a CD and I go to put it on my, or I take a, you know, a cassette, let's just say a cassette, that's a better uh, analogy. Take a cassette or a VHS and you're converting that over to a DVD or to a CD, you're gonna lose some data. 
Um, and the software is really great at keeping the most important, cleanest part of the data. But you are going to lose some data. You know, it, it, there's just no way around it. When you go from analog to digital, you're going to lose some something. Something's going to get lost in the translation there. And the same thing with the data. When you look at data, when you look at sell through rate, it does it gives you a good picture, and it's a great starting point for a lot of people. And I advise a lot of people to, to go by sell through rate when you're first starting out. But as you go, as you start to grow, you, know, you go two, three, four, five years down the road, six years down the road, you should be able to start to identify items that will resell um, that maybe the numbers tell you not to do or you don't even have to rely on the numbers at all you can just start picking up items and start reselling them uh, a lot of people do that uh, a lot of people have been doing this for 10 15 20 years you know they just already know like oh, you know, i know i can sell that item and that's what i do a lot is I see items and I'm like, I'm already envisioning the listing. I'm already envisioning how I'm gonna sell it. I'm already envisioning the customer that's gonna buy this item. I already know what I'm gonna price it at. Um, and it may not be what everybody else is pricing things at. It may not be what, you know, is gonna sell very fast for other, or it's gonna, it's not gonna be what, you know, other people have out there listed that may be sitting there not selling. It may be the same item, but it, I'll get it done. I'll get it done, well, I should say, I'll get it sold faster and quicker than a lot of people that post it and it's just sitting out there creating, you know, this fake data, this fake information. Because, yeah, I talk about this also too, window dressing. You know, you got to you know, really, really um, make sure you describe your item well in the title. Title structure is very important. Pictures, nice, clear, concise pictures. Um, I include rulers in my pictures because I want everyone to know exactly the height and everything of an item because sometimes i'm on there looking at items and i'm like well what's the height of this thing i don't know what it is i don't know what you know i need to know you know what the dimensions are why did they show me the bo the back of this thing why did they show me the bottom of this thing you know so as a consumer as a customer as someone who purchases on ebay pretty regularly i just want i order toothpaste on ebay I, I get my toothpaste from ebay um so i'm ordering that pretty regularly i'm getting lego figures all the time on ebay so I'm a, I'm a buyer on ebay so i know what to look for and i make sure that those things are in my listing so that way when someone sees something they can make you know they can hit just buy <laughs> what i want them to do is just hit buy <laughs> that's what i want them to do look at everything no questions buy the item and that's it and i send it off to them so I hope that was clear and you know i think i kind of i don't know i don't know if i came across clear i kind of started talking about, started going off on a tangent in the middle there but <laughs> um sell through rate sell through rate just isn't everything it could be you could be leaving profit behind if you just stick to sell through rate the goal is to kind of grow beyond that not just stick to it because you could be leaving a lot of great items behind um don't get me wrong though sell you can follow sell through rate all you want i mean you can follow sell through rate your whole reselling life and be pretty successful however sell through rate i've said this before sell through rate is a moving target um what's selling fast right now is can change all of a sudden you know next month Two months from now a year from now and then you got to start finding that next thing that sells really fast and not everybody depending on where you are in the country not everybody can necessarily find those high sell through rate items so you just got to be good at being a salesman um online you know and treat your online store just like an in-person in store don't um don't think it's any different than you know just you going to the mall or you going to to a store or anything like that you know, you still got to keep fresh items up. You still got to be out there sourcing, looking for great items. Don't list it and forget it. Go on there. See, why is this not selling? What's going on? Um, is it the pricing? Is it the pictures I have? Is it the title I have? You know, I've talked, and you guys see me. I've made mistakes in my titles, and I got to get better at also make sure to catch those mistakes. Yes, the item sold, but there was a mistake in there. Could it have sold for more? Could it have sold faster because I misspelled the word? Or I used just this the other day. I also did it, I caught it though, but it was, um, I forgot what word I was trying to get in there, but it kept auto-correcting to something that I really didn't, it sounded just like it, but I, that's not the word I wanted to use. So make sure you're proofreading everything, make sure everything's correct, clear, concise, and you'll get your items sold. So, look out for fairies, fairies, fantasy stuff, do incredibly well. I just got a Mark Jacobs fairy as well, too, somewhere over there. Uh, Mark Jacobs, you know, doesn't, you know, just, well, I think they're ugly, but people really like Mark Jacobs fairies. Um, definitely look out for them. But fairies, fantasy, I sold this fantasy wizard, pewter wizard 
I don't know, a few weeks ago. So that sold really well. Right there. Flower. Flower fairies. Look out for them. They do really well. Right on $25. Don't pay too, too much for them. Don't pay $12 like I did. Try to get them for less. I was okay, comfortable paying that amount um, and the, with that profit margin. Would I like it to be higher? Yes, but it's okay. All right. <clears throat> On to DVDs. DVDs is another tough subject, but uh, or another tough um, area to find profit in because there's just so much, so much of it out there. But look out for In Living Color. These sell really, really fast. I got season one, two, four and five okay so one and two don't really sell for too too much right around six to seven dollars for those ones um season four went for 27 just about 28 dollars or so uh this one here was the big one though 50 i should be looking at my making sure i give you guys the correct numbers that i'm flashing on the screen um 57 dollars and 37 cents so this is a big one this probably could have gone for more but i just sent it an offer and you know someone took it so and i don't have that much into it so i'm, I'm cool with that i'm making some good money on this in living color and i already made money on all the in living covers i picked up because i already sold the other seasons um i copied them first though. i got them on my my media server um you know before i uh before i listed them so season five there are dvds that are worth it um it's just so far a few between it's a needle in a haystack which is why i don't really focus it on focus in on it too too much um if you're doing the volume game if you're selling volume uh you know then maybe you know, buying a lot of dvds can uh can be successful for you it's just not something i'm into something i'm not really wanting to do just sell a bunch of dvds i'd rather just you know glance at the dvds and look for the big hit so when i saw living color i knew living color was one to look out for and um and sure enough i found season one two and then four and five and five is obviously the one that you really really want um uh, if you're reselling it that is uh and if you just want to watch it as well too i mean all the seasons you want uh, i mean i don't know well i'm pretty sure some people don't like in living color but uh huge fan of living color and technically i grew up watching living in living color as a kid i remember when it first came out i thought it was hilarious inappropriate for a kid but I've talked about this. I've watched a lot of animated stuff, so I probably should not have been watching when I was a kid, but we watched it anyway and loved it. Okay. Um, then another thing to look out for, and I saw a lot of these like clocks, uh, desk clocks, alarm clocks, but really cool. Actually, I just picked up another clock today. Um, similar to this. This is actually a barometer as a... Is it a clock? Oh, it's not even a clock. It's a barometer. Um, I was thinking a clock, but it's not. It's a barometer. It's... Um, uh, what do you call it? Thermometer, humidity gauge, all that stuff rolled up in one. This is a tailor. So definitely look out for it. This one sold for $22. Picks up for two bucks. So pretty good sale right there. $22.84 is what we sold this for. Definitely be on the lookout for these mid-century modern pieces. Um, I do, every time I find like mid-century modern style clocks, those sell really well. I picked up a Pottery Barn, you know, three clock. Kind of, you can set it up to how many, you know, wherever you want the different time zones in the U.S. Um, maybe places you travel to, you want to see the different time zones or, you know, what time is in that place. So I picked up a Pottery Barn, and that Pottery Barn goes for $30 $40. So definitely look out for these pieces. Um, uh, temp, uh, thermometer ones, look out for uh, clocks like this. Uh, be careful just because some of them can be very cheaply made and can look like they're quality, but not really. This one is, you kind of get into that touch, that feel. This one can feel very, um, very flimsy or not good quality. It is just plastic, but just, you know, again, using my knowledge, using what I know, Based on my experience, I knew this was an older piece, and I knew this would um, definitely sell. Not going to sell for a crazy amount. We're not getting rich off this thing, but it's a great profit that we're making on this item. So definitely look out for it. Just cool, mid-century modern. Yeah, This right here takes me back to Three's Company. That's what this reminds me of immediately, like that styling from that show. So, And I'm a huge Three's Company fan as well, too. Um Okay, those are the items. A little bit different today, so I hope you guys um, 
you know, learn something from this, you know, don't, don't just sit, you know, look at the data and just stick to it. And that's it. Try to grow beyond it. Try to look, you know, in between the data, um, try to use your instinct. Definitely, you know, check on eBay. I always check on eBay just to see what to, what I should be pricing items at. Um, sometimes I'll pick up an item and be like, you know, I haven't, I haven't purchased that in a while. So let me just see what they're currently going for. And that's primarily what I rely on the eBay app for is to see what I could price that item at. Um, not so much looking at the sell-through rate. I'm already determining, can I sell that? Can I not sell that? Um, sometimes if my wife is with me, I'll refer to my wife and be like, hey, what do you think of this item? Do you think that's cool? Do you think we can get it sold? What do you think? Uh, what do you think of the quality of this item? You know, having a second pair of eyes, second pair of hands, helping you out when you're out and about is, you know, it, it really does make this just a little bit easier um, if you can. However, look out for fairies, fantasy stuff, and living color DVDs. Look out for There's a lot of other DVDs that can sell really well. Um, I can't think of any that I have right now. Lord of the Rings, you know, the box sets of the extended version of the Lord of the Rings. I just sold one of those. Uh, that sold for $28 and some change. Uh, it was a complete box set and got it at the flea market. So I paid, uh, I think, like two bucks for it, if I remember correctly. Not too, too much. I don't try to pay too, too much for them. Sometimes people will price them up because they are Lord of the Rings. And they'll price them like $5 a box set. Or $5 for each individual little set that's inside the main box set. And that you can't really pay. Um, but uh, if you can get the whole box set for 5 bucks or less, that would be pretty good. So... Uh, there are definitely some DVDs out there, but it's just a huge, huge market. It's so flooded full of DVDs that um, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, everything's tough. This whole thing is finding all these items are tough. I was already at the flea market. I was already at the Goodwill searching for items, hunting down items. It was hot. It was, we're thirsty. We're getting hungry. It's not easy. <laughs> it is tough. Um, so don't think that this can't, you know, that me just showing you this in these videos, that, that's it. You know, I'm just finding these automatically. I'm out there a lot looking for items, hunting down items. Uh, but that's what I like. I like to hunt. I like hunting, finding items. And of course, if I go find cool items to add to my collection, that's even better. Just like that Lego set in the last video, which is in my collection. Um, in Living Color, technically it's in my collection. I was able to um, put it on my media server, so that's pretty cool. Otherwise... That's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoy the weekend. Um, yeah, just hit like the video, hit thumbs up, subscribe, comment down below, bell notification, and um, see you in the next one.